Today we're going to give a quick look at the Seagate Exos Mach 2 2x18 18TB hard drive. And here we have the traditional Exos X18 18TB hard drive. And over here we have the Seagate Exos Mach 2 2x18 18TB hard drive. They don't look remarkably different, do they? And actually, if you throw it on a scale, the regular Exos X18 is 656 grams or 1 pound 7.1 ounces. And the Mach 2 weighs 658 grams, oh, 660 grams, or one pound, 7.3 ounces. So not significantly heavier. While hard drive capacities have increased consistently over the years, hard drive performance has not so much. And uh, what Seagate's trying to do with the Mach 2 technology is basically improve the performance of your hard drive. And how are they going to do that? Well, traditionally in a hard drive, this is actually a much bigger, older one, but just for demonstration purposes, Usually you've got multiple platters, in this case it's only two, but in here there's actually ten total platters stacked on top of each other. Then you have an actuator which pivots over the surface so that it can read and write data as the disk spins. So what they basically have done is that they've put two sets of actuators on here so that they can pivot independently. And uh, Seagate actually has a little demo of that. It's actually pretty interesting technology. So effectively it can run as two separate hard drives internally. Now Seagate offers these in both SAS and SATA variants. This one is the SATA variant. And uh, as an SAS drive, apparently they uh, actually are presented as two separate uh, independent drives. The SATA is presented as a single disk. I just thought I'd mention that I purchased a few of these disks as refurbished, recertified, used, whatever you want to call it, from an outlet called Server Part Deals. I have no affiliation with them, uh, but they do offer a large number of high capacity hard drives, some used, some new, and their claim to fame is customer service and packaging. The packaging is definitely very good. The four discs that I ordered came double boxed and the discs were all in antiseptic bags and safely separated from each other using high quality foam. These discs released back in November of 2022, so I'm only about a year late to the party. But in my defense, I was only able to actually get a hold of these drives until uh, just recently. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the spec sheets for this drive, you can see here, this is the model that I have, the ST18000NM0092. You can see here, capacity per actuator is 9 terabytes. So it's basically split up into two separate drives. And uh, if you look here, you can see the performance, maximum sustained transfer rate of 545 megabytes per second, with that little uh, highlight there, number 4, which says, when operating both actuators simultaneously. Apparently, the, SA, the uh, SAS variant of this disk actually has these 9 terabyte uh, units or each actuator set separated. Uh, so you, when you plug it in your system, you're going to see two separate disks. Whereas the SATA is basically combined as a single disk. Now, apparently, the SATA disks are supposed to have LBAs split down the middle. So if you partition one disk in the first half of the LBAs and the second partition in the second half of the LBAs, each partition should be running on their own actuators and platters. Obviously for the SAS variant, these are already pre-configured as individual disks, so you don't need to worry about it. But to get the maximum performance, you would need to stripe rate each partition, which would be easier on the SAS version than the SATA version. My goal is ultimately to see if I can get these working in Windows. So once I unpacked the disks, the first thing I did was throw one in my Windows desktop to see what we could find out. It was presented as a regular single disk in disk management and could create a partition just like any other disk. Now running a quick crystal disk mark and comparing the Mach 2 with the regular Exos 18, the sequential read-write performance was comparable. So your typical hard drive uh, sweep, as you can see here, this is not that disk, but it's another disk, but just to represent the performance curve here. So you're going to start up pretty high here. This one's about 210 megabytes per second. That's going to sweep down here and end up at about 100 to 120 megabytes per second once it gets to the inside of the disk. So because this is actually two actuators, we're going to kind of hopefully expect something like this, right? It's going to start at the top, get down here, and then once it gets midway, it should pop back up here because the second set of actuators are going to kick in. So it's going to act like a second hard drive, right? And so you're going to get the sweep that goes like this. And sure enough, I went ahead and did a full read sweep of that disk, and 24 hours later, I uh, ended up with this result. And uh, you can see it started about 260, 270 megabytes per second. Uh, slowly swept down to about 150 megabytes per second. Once it hit the midway point, popped back up to about the 252, 60 megabyte per second and swept all the way back down here. So this just confirms that the uh, 
hard drive actually does have a couple set of actuators on there. So with that, I went ahead and created two partitions on the hard drive. I split it exactly halfway through using disk management. I took the total capacity of the drive as provided by disk management new simple volume command box and divided it by two. And then I plugged that value in for the first partition and then created the second partition which matched the same amount. Once those were made, I went ahead and ran Crystal Disk Mark on both partitions, both uh, running them simultaneously, but then also independently so we can kind of see if they're running at the same time or running on their own if we're going to have any performance difference. The problem with Crystal Disk Mark though is that in between each test segment, it takes a five second interval break. So if one partition is lagging behind the other, then they can get out of sync and one is running a test while the other is idle, which could skew the results. So I'm not sure if this is really the best representation of performance but I guess it gives us a general idea. I also did a little bit of research to see if there's a way to ensure the disk is partitioned properly rather than just through Windows uh, Disk Management. And I fell on Level 1 Tech site, uh, their forum, and they offered a suggestion to use the Linux parted command to properly split the disk. And while I didn't expect much different performance, I thought I'd give it a try anyhow. So in order to do this, you just have to make sure to format the partitions as NTFS and Linux Otherwise, once you get to Windows, there are just two partitions in disk management, and you can't do anything with them. You can't create a drive ladder, you can't format them, so they're basically there, but you can't do anything with them. So if you create the partitions in Linux, you should go ahead and format them as NTFS in Linux uh, before popping it back into the Windows machine, and then they should show up as NTFS partitions with a drive ladder. But in the end, just splitting the drives into two independent partitions doesn't seem very useful unless you have a very specific parallel workflow that can take advantage of it. The results weren't actually very stellar either. What would work best is if we could RAID 0 these partitions together and present them as a single partition. Unfortunately in Windows it's not possible to RAID at the partition level, only the disk level. But I did find a suggestion for using an MD Admin RAID driver for Windows with the caveat that you need to configure everything in Linux before porting it over to your Windows PC. Now in order to do this you should first install the MD Admin Windows driver before installing your RAIDed disk. To install the driver, it's simple enough. You just download, right-click the INF file, and install, and then reboot your computer. Then you need to go ahead and set up the RAID on the disk with a Linux distribution using mdadmin RAID. Effectively use the previous method, creating partitions with that Linux parted command, but then create an mdadmin RAID 0 between the two partitions. And then finally, you should format the MD0 partition with NTFS on top. Once you've done that, go ahead and shut down your Linux distro, remove the disk, and pop it into your Windows box. Now with this uh, MD Admin driver in Windows, once you boot up, you should see the disk with two partitions in disk management, but you have no control over the disk. You can right click on it, do whatever you want, and nothing happens. Uh, so it's managed by the MD Admin driver specifically. Now you can see if it's working by going to Device Manager, and you should see a storage volume with WinMD controller and a WinMD volume. My drive letter was automatically assigned to it, but I could not find a way to change the drive letter or manage any control over it whatsoever. So basically once you plug it in, you get what you get. Now with the RAID partition set up, I went ahead and ran Crystal Disk Mark, and the results with this new RAID partition seem promising, uh, raising single disk sequential performance from about 270 megabytes per second read and write, up to about 315 megabytes per second write, and 381 megabytes per second read. I mean, it's a far cry from the near double performance in the 545 megabyte per second claimed by Seagate, but it definitely shows an improvement. Now I wanted to see if I could get better performance out of Linux, so I also set up the disk in Linux with uh, the MD Admin RAID 0, but then formatted it ext4 partition on top of that, then ran the kdisk mark benchmark, which is basically uh, Linux's version of Crystal Disk Mark. The results were largely similar, although uh, kdisk mark uh, performance, read performance, seemed to be uh, considerably better than the Windows version. Synthetic benchmarks like Crystal Disk Mark are all fine and dandy, but they also aren't necessarily representative of a real world real world workload. To emulate a file transfer, I quickly put together a PowerShell script using RoboCopy to transfer 100 one gigabyte sized files from an SSD and then measure the performance both with disks in RAID 0 as well as individual partitions. And the results from this were unfortunately disappointing. didn't seem to match up with the Crystal Disk Mark performance metrics. So here's a summary of all that testing. First up here we have the Crystal Disk Mark sequential performance and at the top here we've got the regular Exos X18 and the second portion here we have the Mach 2 2x18 drive. And uh, these are just basically the sequential read and write performance. The write is orange, the read is blue, and uh, you can see they largely match up uh, with just uh, setting up a single partition on each of these disks. 
Now for this section here, we have the uh, hard drive partition down the middle using the Linux parted command, and then doing crystal disk mark simultaneous one to each partition at the same time. Here's the results that we have here. And you can see that the uh, first partition seemed to do fine, pretty comparable to a single partition. And then the second partition, as it was writing to both of these simultaneously, seemed to falter a little bit. Not significant, but still, um, it uh, definitely is a drop in performance. And then the second section here, we have, uh, again, the disk split into two partitions down the middle, but using Windows Disk Management. And uh, you can see here the performance basically degraded on both uh, partitions here when running the simultaneous crystal disk mark. And lastly, when I went in and did the MD admin raid, MD raid uh, in Linux with the ext4, you can see here performance with kdisk mark actually. Uh, the write was 318 versus the MD RAID in Windows 315. And then the read performance in KDisk Mark was about 446 megabytes per second versus 381 megabytes per second in Windows. So that seems pretty promising when you do it as a, uh, a rated partition. However, when you look at real world performance, uh, this is basically representing a file copy of 101 gigabyte files and using the RoboCopy command in Windows. Uh, you can see here at the top, we are using a SATA SSD and copying it to the Exos Mach 2 and just with a single partition, and it only got about 117 megabytes per second. Now, copying that same data to the regular Exos X18, it got about, got about 246 megabytes per second, which is to be expected. And lastly, just as kind of a uh, litmus test here, uh, copying that same data to an NVMe drive just to show you maximum performance of this SSD is about 353 megabytes per second. So it should not bottleneck any of the transfers to the hard drives. And then we take a look at the split partitions and uh, copying it to each partition simultaneously. On the uh, Mach 2 drive, we ended up with only about 78 megabytes per second uh, to each. So that's pretty degraded. And then uh, when we do the split partition, uh, copied from partition A to partition B, uh, with on the same disk, basically we ended up with 120 megabytes per second. And then it, I just did a drag and drop of the same thing um, with the split partition capping from partition A to partition B. It only ended up at about 89 megabytes per second. And lastly, uh, doing the a, a file copy in Linux using the RAID 0 method, we ended up with 193 megabytes per second. And in Windows with the RAID 0 method, ended up with 166 megabytes per second. So as a Windows drive, the Mach 2 doesn't seem to offer any advantages whatsoever. If you look at the Seagate Exos X18 without the dual actuators, it performed admirably and is expected and actually better than the Mach 2. And uh, I'm sure with further testing and configuration, it may be possible to get better performance out of the disk, but for the most part, I uh, definitely didn't see it here. So how about using the Mach 2 disk as a NAS disk? Now, I wasn't expecting much, but I did install the Exos 2X18 in four of the most popular NAS brand devices uh, as just a single disk and checked for basic functionality, hoping I might be delightfully surprised with one that would actually be dual actuator aware and make use of it. Granted, these NAS devices I'm testing are not the latest and greatest, but they still are fairly relevant and still support the latest NAS OS version from their respective manufacturers. First, the Synology DS920+. Plus. The system booted up and configured DSM 7.2 just fine. Exos 2x18 was detected as a regular disk and was able to create a single disk volume with no issues. Now on to the Aza Store AS1104T. It was updated with the latest ADM version 4.2.4 and the Exos 2x18 was also detected as just a regular disk and no issues with installation or setting up with a single disk storage volume with it. Next was the TerraMaster F2 210, updated to the latest TOS 4.2.43. It had no issues with accepting the disk and configuring a single disk storage volume just like the others, but still none of them detected it as anything special so far. And lastly, the QNAP TS231P. It's a much older version compared with the other devices, and it did actually end up having some issues. It seemed to boot up just fine, and it was a, I was able to update the firmware to the latest 5.1.3.2578, but then after updating, it would get stuck in a loop and go back to asking to install the latest updates and never boot into the OS. So I ended up removing the disk, threw in an old 500 gigabyte hard drive I had laying around, and everything booted up and installed just fine. Then I installed the Seagate Exos 2x18 hard drive, and then I was actually able to detect it within the uh, 
QTS operating system. The problem is, is that it actually showed up as a SSD and it actually showed the two partitions um, on there as hard drives, but I was unable to actually create a volume um, using that disk at all. So it seems this particular NAS in a QTS version is not compatible with this disk yet. Given more time, I'm sure I could do some testing in different RAID configurations, but not sure it would be very beneficial with these NAS devices at least, considering these all run with just one gigabit Ethernet. This disk is more or less designed to be manually configured in specific RAID environments, and it's best to make use of these disks after doing research and are willing to manually configure the partitions appropriately. It seems users have had some good success with these disks so far running in ZFS, but as a general purpose use case, it offers no benefit that I can see.